Hello and welcome guys and welcome to this short video and yes in this video we are going to discuss all the amendments or at least the important amendments which have come by in the direct taxation uh, which are which will be applicable for uh, July 23 and December 23 attempt students um, uh, and yes guys these amendments have been brought in by the finance act 2022 these amendments are to be studied by all the students who are going to appear in the July 23 examination or December 23 examination so Let's start with the amendments and yes, as we are aware that from the amendments, uh, at least one or two questions are bound to come. The examiners are enticed or endured to uh, uh, cover the amendments in the examination. So yes, July 23 attempt, uh, you should do these amendments well and uh, you can expect, you may expect at least one question from these amendments in the July 23 or at least uh, December 23 attempt. Okay, so let's start with the amendments. Guys, I have distributed the amendments into the broad heads or the chapters which we um, study in the class. So the first amendment has come in the basics concepts chapter, the tax rates, okay? Now, uh, uh, guys, in the tax rates, the surcharge um, uh, was categorized according to the income levels and there were uh, multiple layers of surcharge which were uh, applicable on various SSEs. Especially for the SSEs whose income is 2 crores and above, their uh, you know, uh, higher uh, rate of surcharge which is 25% and 37% were applicable in the earlier year. But there were two category of income, uh, actually three category of income on which this higher rate was not applicable even if the income was above 2 crores. What were those three category of income? Dividend income, uh, capital gain, short term capital gain under section 111A and long term capital gain under section 112A. So these three incomes even if the uh, income is above 2 crores even then enhanced um, or the increased rate of surcharge was not applicable and the surcharge rate applicable was 15%. You could not have charged more surcharge in case of these three incomes. Now guys, from this particular year, Finance Act 2022, one more kind of income has been added to this list, the long-term capital gain which is other than shares under section 112. So guys, now even uh, the long-term capital gains which are stated in 112 which is other than shares even on these long-term capital gains you cannot put or you cannot levy uh, additional surcharge or increased surcharge of 25 and 37 percent the maximum surcharge which can be put on this particular um, uh, income is 15 percent so I can in a uh, summary say that the, all the incomes which are there in capital gains chapter guys all those incomes are subject to only a maximum tax rate of 15% even if their income is above uh, 2 crores even then guys enhanced surcharge 25% and 37% are not applicable on this income so one more income has been added 112 112A, 111A were already there, dividends were already there, one more income which is added is 112, this is the amendment which has come in, the basic concept chapter which is tax rates. Another amendment which comes every year, this is nothing new, it comes every year, they uh, push the year by one more year. So the companies on which 25% um, uh, tax rate is applicable, usual tax rate is 30% but uh, smaller companies and that to domestic companies um, are eligible for a beneficial tax rate of 25% only if their turnover did not exceed 400 crores in the previous year 2019-20. This year has been increased by one more year. Now the previous year uh, 2021 will be considered for uh, seeing this threshold. So if your gross turnover does not exceed rupees 4 crore in the previous year 2021, then guys tax rate of 25% is applicable on this particular domestic company. So this is uh, an important amendment from um, uh, you know exam standpoint because in the examination generally you are given multiple years at turnover just to confuse you. Examiner will give multiple years turnover just to confuse you. You have to take care that for the current financial year which is 20 to 23 the turnover to be seen is for financial year 2021. If that uh, uh, turnover is more than 400 crores only then the tax rate of 25% will be applicable on that particular domestic company. This is the second amendment which has come in this chapter, basic concepts. Then PGBP, one very very important um, amendment has come in PGBP uh, chapter guys and yes this uh, uh, amendment is derived from section 43b. So what is section 43b? Uh, in certain cases the deduction is allowable for the expenditure only on payment basis. This is section 43b. So there's a list of uh, expenses or uh, to say you know payment of taxes or um, some cess or bonus of the employees interest which is payable to banking uh, corporations all these expenses if you want a deduction for these expenses then you have to actually pay 
these expenses during the year um, uh, uh, you know if even if uh, uh, if you only pay these expenses only then deduction will be allowed deduction will not be allowed on an accrual concept basis one of those elements is interest if you are paying interest to any banking corporation you have taken loan from bank or any financial institution and you are paying interest um, uh, to to the banking institution then guys if you want deduction in your because it's a business expenditure of course you deserve a deduction <coughs> If you want a deduction, then you have to actually pay that amount to the bank to get the deduction. So this section is on um, expenditure which are allowed on payment basis. Now there is an amendment in this particular section, but first I'll tell you what was the relevant fact in this particular um, uh, section. Okay. So guys, section forty-three B used to say that if interest is actually paid. only then deduction is allowed okay now sometimes what happens is you know um, there's a company who has taken loan worth rupees 10 lakhs from a bank now uh, it has accumulated interest over past several years okay it did not pay interest for many many years so accumulated interest which it has not paid for many many years amounts to rupees 5 lakh this is accumulated interest which the company has not paid to the bank So now the total liability which is to be repaid to the bank is fifteen lakh rupees. That is the total liability which is to be repaid to the bank. Now under this circumstance, when the um, uh, assessee or the taxpayer is not able to pay such hefty amount together, it requests the bank that bank please convert this interest also into a loan, and I will pay you this interest in on an instalment basis on an EMI basis. So please convert this interest also into loan. so this is loan 1 this will become loan 2 or this will be incorporated in loan 1 itself this is known as conversion of interest due into loan now according to income tax act this conversion of interest into loan does not qualify as payment of interest you have not paid the interest so this does not qualify as payment of interest and therefore no deduction will be allowed for this conversion of interest from interest to loan element no reduction will be allowed in the books of accounts no reduction will be allowed in the chapter pgbp that was the proviso which was added because you know people were um, converting their interest into loan and then they were claiming that oh this is our uh, payment we have all paid the interest interest account is uh, standing to nil when interest account is nil then you please give us a deduction of interest uh, uh, indian income tax act said no you have to actually pay the interest to get the deduction so when you pay this amount actually then you will get this reduction not right now okay so this was the um uh, this was the uh, section which was introduced that you know payment of interest will be um uh, will not qualify uh, the conversion of loan into a uh, conversion of interest into loan that will not qualify as payment of interest that was the basic underlying principle behind um uh, 43b um uh, section okay now guys people are very smart okay taxpayers are very smart they just want ways to evade tax and just to um, uh, you know uh, do some tax planning around the words which are written in the section so the words which are written in the section is that the conversion of loan uh, conversion of interest due into loan will not tant amount to payment of taxes so people uh, uh, found a new way of converting this loan in uh, converting this interest into something else they converted this interest into any debenture or any other security they did not convert it into loan they converted it into any other security any other debenture or any other security people started converting into because the section specifically said that conversion of interest into loan is not will not be considered as um, uh, you know payment of interest so now we are not converting the interest into loan we are converting the interest into either debenture or security so people uh, started taking this um, uh, this plea that this conversion will be eligible for deduction under section 43b to nullify this misinterpretation this is absolute misinterpretation of law guys to nullify this misinterpretation amendment has been done in section 43b where outstanding interest on loan taken from bank npfc pfis etc is converted into loan then such interest is not deemed as interest paid this section was slightly tweaked to say that where outstanding interest on loan taken from bank nbfc pfis is converted into a loan or debentures or any other instrument 
So even if you convert this interest, pending interest into debenture or any other instrument, because you can change a, a, a name of that instrument, you can convert into anything else because you are very smart. We know that. So we have inserted a open-ended expression. Any other instrument, if you convert this interest into any other instrument, then such interest is not deemed as interest paid. So now, only if you only when you pay the interest to the bank, only then the deduction will be eligible. You will not be eligible for deduction only by converting this interest into loan. This is the amendment which has been done by Finance Act 2022. Okay, sir, got it. Next amendment is in the capital gain guys. CII has changed and it's a very um, uh, normal change. 331 is the latest CII. So that is um, uh, an easy one. Okay. Ah, now a very major amendment uh, done by Finance Act 22 in the exceptions to gift tax. So 56 to 10, there are certain exceptions which are given in the gift tax. Um, uh, certain gifts which are given um, uh, are not considered as gifts and they will not be taxable as a gift tax under the income from other sources head. So um, now what are those uh, gifts? Guys, in that uh, list of gifts, there are certain additional things which have been added in the current year. And those additional things we need to learn. Okay, so exceptions to gift tax. I mean, um, uh, by uh, th these uh, uh, gifts will not be um, uh, excisable to 56 to 10 uh, uh, taxability. That is the expression. Okay, there are many, many, many such gift tax which are there. Uh, we have done in the class, guys. Um, uh, out of those many, many, many um, uh, exceptions, we have added few more exceptions to this list. So exceptions to gift tax under section 56 to 10. So gift tax shall not apply to the following gifts. So the following gifts are not eligible for, um, uh, you know, gift tax. Now, this section is purposely introduced to um, facilitate or to benefit certain people who, um, uh, you know, who uh, helped other people during COVID time. So guys, during COVID time, COVID-19 time, uh, you know, the messages used to flow on WhatsApp group. Someone is critical. Someone needs oxygen. Someone needs food. Please supply food to that person. Someone is uh, not well. Please supply medical facilities to that person. Some some people used to send money um, uh, to people who are suffering during COVID-19 time. So people had helped each other a lot. So, you know, if my neighbor is suffering, I would give him some money so that he can survive. Uh, you know, he has no source of income. And uh, during COVID, all the sources of income were actually snapped off. So, you know, if I supplied someone... Um, uh, some money during the COVID time or if I um, uh, gifted some money to a random person, a third person uh, during COVID time. Of course, if you gift someone to a random person, it is covered under the gift tax and it is covered under 56 to 10. If I, um, uh, you know, gift someone to, my, uh, to a non-relative, okay, for relatives, there is an exception, okay. I uh, gift some money to a non-relative, then of course uh, it covers, um, it gets covered under the section of um, the gift tax, which is 56 to 10. But to nullify this effect, to give genuine relief to people who genuinely helped each other during COVID time, exceptions have been increased. So if you have um, uh, received gifts by an individual from any person in respect of any expenditure actually incurred by him on his medical treatment or treatment of any member of his family for any illness related to COVID. So if Mr. A and Mr. B, they are unrelated person, okay. Mr. A supplied some money to Mr. B. And what was the purpose of this money? The purpose of this money um, was medical treatment medical treatment of of Mr. B or family of Mr. B. Okay. The purpose is only medical treatment of Mr. B or family of Mr. B. So if Mr. A has given some money to Mr. B, say Mr. A has given 1 lakh rupees to Mr. B. Okay. What is the purpose of this 1 lakh rupees? The purpose is medical treatment of Mr. B or his family. Medical treatment of Mr. B or his family, that is the purpose of this 1 lakh rupees which has been transferred by Mr. A to Mr. B. If the purpose is medical treatment and the transfer of money happens from Mr. A to Mr. B, maybe it's 1 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees or whatever, then gift tax is not applicable. Because it's a gift in hands of Mr. B. Mr. B is receiving the gift, right, from an unrelated person. So ideally it should have come under the ambit of 56 to 10. But in this case, it will not be covered under the ambit of 56 to 10. Why? Because um, now this was the COVID time and this medical treatment was pertaining to COVID-19 um, illness. Please note, uh, treatment for any other illness is not eligible in this particular section. Also, please note, 
reimbursement of money or giving of money for any other purpose apart from medical treatment giving money for food given giving money for um, uh, clothes shelter is not eligible for this particular um, uh, exemption exception it is not applicable okay exception is strictly for only medical treatment and that to related to illness related to covid 19 that is the um, uh, section all about okay either it is given to uh, the the recipient which is mr b or it is given to the family of the recipient both the um, medical treatments are permissible as ex exceptions so in this case mr b is not required to pay a uh, gift tax to government of india which is under 56210 okay so gift tax shall not apply on gifts received by an individual only individual should be the recipient the recipient should be the individual recipient cannot be a company recipient cannot be an huf recipient cannot be a, um, a partnership firm any other form of uh, a nature of person is not eligible for this particular exception now guys the examiner can trick you over here examiner can trick you over here he'll give you that gift has been received by an huf for the members for their medical treatment illness not eligible it should be given to individual only so received by an individual from any person the uh, giver can be any person recipient should be an individual in respect of any expenditure actually incurred so expenditure should have been actually incurred by mr b and mr b should be able to prove that expenditure was incurred by way of say uh, invoices of the medicines or invoices of the hospitals he should be able to prove on his medical treatment or treatment of any member of his family for any illness related to covid 19 exception is there gift tax is not applicable in this case in addition to the other list other list is there okay don't think that other list is uh, superseded that list original list is always there in addition to that list this is another exception to this particular section then gift tax shall not be applicable on gift received by a member of the family of a deceased person so if a person dies due to covid if a person dies due to covid and some other person gives some charity money to the family of that uh, deceased person then that also is covered under this exception but there are certain conditions to be fulfilled let's see the conditions by a member of the family by member of the family of the deceased person by member of the family of the deceased person a from the employer of the deceased person employer might give um you know money to the employees family so employer might out of courtesy out of generosity say that you know wife uh, and children of my employee are now abundant uh, i need to give some money to the family so employer is giving money to the family okay there is no limit for this particular um, uh, gift any amount of gift can be given 1 crore 2 crore any amount of gift can be given from the employer to the family of the deceased person so there is no limit over here if the money is given by some other person apart from the employer if you know some relative is giving uh, some distant relative is giving some money or uh, um, some other person is giving uh, some money so apart from employer if someone else gives this money to the family of the deceased person then the limit is uh, up to the maximum of 10 lakh rupees so if 12 lakh rupees is given to the family member then guys 10 lakh rupees is exempt from tax 2 lakh rupees will be eligible for taxation so in this case um, uh, you know from any other person aggregate up to 10 lakh rupees up to 10 lakh rupees will be exempt it will not uh, be under under the uh, prelims of uh, gift tax but if it is above 10 lakh rupees then it will fall under the provisions of gift tax where now there are two important conditions where the cause of death is covid 19 very very important it is not necessary that uh, uh, you know the death the death uh, happens due to covid only sometimes death happens due to failure of uh, heart during covid time but then this exception is not applicable this exception is applicable only when the cause of death is covid 19 if the cause of death is something else apart from covid 19 this exception is not applicable entire 12 lakh will be taxable in hands of the recipient under the gift tax regime okay the next is the payment is received within 12 months from the date of death of such person so payment should have been received within 12 months of death of such person which means payment should not be delayed within one year the payment should be uh, received by such person within one year the payment should be received by such uh, by the family of such person uh, the person who has died within one year the family should receive the payment if the payment is being received 
after one year then it is not eligible for this particular exception then um, uh, you know the uh, the charging the charge of gift tax will happen if the payment is received after one year of death of the person so two time two important conditions one is the timeline second is the cause of death these are to be fulfilled only then exception is applicable gift tax is not applicable under these situations okay then guys the definition of family is given in the section itself what does family mean family here means spouse and children of the individual and parents brothers sisters of the individual who are wholly or mainly dependent on him so if dependent family members are getting um, uh, compensation then it's exempt but if independent um, uh, family members are getting compensation then it is not exempt and spouse children whether they are independent or dependent they will get the exemption they will not uh, you know um, uh, be under the obligation of dependence okay sir got it now guys one amendment in the tds section tax director as at source section 195 ia so section 195 ia says that tds is not applicable where the consideration for the transfer of an immoveable property is less than rupees 50 lakhs so guys in this uh, section the section pertains to a case where uh, immoveable property is transferred and in case of immoveable property tds sections are applied okay but there is an exception that if immoveable property um, now the consideration is less than 50 lakh rupees then the tds will not be applicable now you remember the capital gain section you know we compare the uh, value of consideration with the stamp duty value sometimes you are selling the property at a very very low rate we compare it with stamp duty value we uh, you know compare the 110% um, uh, extent of uh, liberty is given in the section so we compare the stamp duty value and the full value of consideration and if the stamp duty value is higher then we take the consideration as stamp duty value but in this section guys the tds was supposed to be deducted only on the consideration what if sdv was higher and we are taking sdv as the consideration that eventuality was not considered in the old section in the old section only and only consideration was given as the deciding criteria so if your consideration is less than 50 lakhs then um, uh, you know you were not uh, supposed to deduct this tds but what if the stamp duty value was above 50 lakhs then there's no um, uh, you know no need to uh, deduct the tax even in that case because the section says consideration should be less than 50 lakhs so if my consideration is less than 50 lakhs i'm not eligible to deduct the tax if my stamp duty value is uh, above 50 lakhs i'm not uh, required to deduct the tax this led to a loophole in this particular section which is curbed by the finance act 2022 what is the new section uh, how does the new section read tds is not applicable where the consideration for transfer of an immoveable property and stamp duty value of the property is less than 50 lakh rupees so both the things should be less than 50 lakh rupees if you want an exemption from this section both the things should be less than 50 lakh rupees number 1 the immoveable property um, uh, consideration should be less than uh, 50 lakh rupees and the stamp duty value should also be less than 50 lakh rupees even if one of them is above 50 lakh rupees you are eligible to deduct tds on this transaction a very very thought through and a very very critical um, uh, guys amendment which has uh, taken place over here because capital gain sections are directly linked with um, uh, this tds deduction section so a correlation has been established between the capital gain sections and the tds sections so now both the things uh, your consideration as well as your stamp duty value should be less than 50 lakh only then when both the things are less than 50 lakh only then the tds is exempt if if even one of the things is above 50 lakhs if even one of the things is above 50 lakhs then you have to deduct the taxes guys you have to deduct the tds that is the amendment which has come by section 194 ia and last amendment which has come in the um uh, in the provisions of return of income so there's a list where there is a mandatory filing of return of income seventh proviso to section 139 uh, it it gives us the situations where even if your taxable income is less than the demarcated income even then returns are required to be filed over there certain expenditures are there if you um, make certain expenditures about about certain amounts or deposit some cash in the bank uh, uh, beyond a particular limit then you mandatorily have to furnish your return of income even if your taxable income is less than the prescribed limit okay so this was the section um, 139 mandatory furnishing of return in these cases there was a list which was given in these cases the 
return of income was mandatorily required to be filed. Okay. Now there's an addition to this uh, list under uh, the Finance Act 2022, and Finance Act 2022 has inserted these four bullets in the mandatory requirement of filing the return. Okay. Now if these four points are satisfied, then you have to mandatorily file your return of income. Mandatorily. There is no option given to you. Uh, case number one. when your turnover when your sales in case of business when your sales in case of business exceeds 60 lakh rupees during previous year you have to file your return of income guys do remember you know earlier the limit was on taxable income profit but now the limit has been changed the uh, the consideration has been changed and now the criteria is sales even if you are into losses and you don't have any profits or even if you have if you have minimal profits but your sales is above 60 lakh rupees you have to file your return of income earlier the limit was only on the taxable income if your taxable income is above the um now threshold limit only then return of income was required to be filed but now this limit has been um uh, you know expanded to the gross receipts and sales turnover as well now your sales turnover is above 60 lakh rupees you have to file the return of income from profit the focus has been shifted on sales or turnover that is the shift which has happened in this particular um uh, section next is total gross receipts in case of profession okay like in business there is sales or turnover okay in business uh, it's 60 lakh rupees in profession it is 10 lakh rupees so if you become a cma okay uh, obviously you will become a cma there's no ifs and buts about it when you become a cma and your uh, practice you uh, set up your practice and your practice gross receipts is above 10 lakh rupees during the previous year guys you have to mandatorily file your return of income even if you are into losses but your gross receipts is above 10 lakh rupees you have to file your return of income even if you have minimal profits or if you even if you are in losses um it doesn't matter guys you have to file your return of income next aggregate of tds or tcs during the previous year is rupees 25000 or more in case of senior citizens 50000 rupees so guys if the tds which has been deducted in your case by anyone else if the tds which has been deducted in your case by anyone else is above 25000 rupees then guys you have to mandatorily file your return of income if your tds has been deducted it is an indication that you have taxable income you, know, you have income whether taxable or not we need to compute but you have income okay so government wants to scrutinize uh, you know uh, whether your claim that your income is taxable income is nil or very minimal is true or not so it is asking you to file the return of income you please file the return of income so if the tds which has been deducted in your case or tcs which has been collected in your case is um uh, 25000 or more or in case of senior citizen it is 50000 or more then guys you have to mandatorily file your return of income next deposit in one or more savings bank account of the person in aggregate is 50 lakh or more during the previous year so if you have deposited a sum of more than 50 lakhs in a particular year in your savings bank account then you will be um, bound to file your return of income guys there is an existing limit of um, uh, for for the deposits which are made in current accounts okay now limit has also been provided for savings account 50 lakh rupees guys now let me tell you the idea behind this mandatory furnishing of return okay it is not that we are saying that you are cheating you are uh, misstating your income we are not saying that it is just that if you think that your income is below the taxable limit and that's why you are not um, uh, filing your return of income it's perfectly fine but at least give an opportunity to the government of india to check your claim give an opportunity to the government of india to check your claim because by not filing return of income you are not giving an opportunity to the government of india to check whether your profits have been stated truly or not so this is just an endeavor this is just a um a, a trial to make sure that you are disclosing your profits rightly correctly and it it, it is just to uh, ask to ask you to file your return of income the government wants to check your return of income because if you don't file your return of income government doesn't have an opportunity to check what is written in your um return of income so the idea behind this section is to give an opportunity to the government of india income tax department to check our claim that our income is super low that we are not supposed to file the return of income okay so that is the idea behind introducing four more layers of um uh, uh, you know conditions whereby your mandatory return of income uh, must be filed and if you do not file return of income in this case then you are eligible for penalties interest and whatever follows after that 
so yes guys these were small small very small small a uh, few very important uh, changes in the finance act 2022 which are important from your exam standpoint i have particularly particularly focus on um, now the important amendments because uh, you know there are many unimportant trivial amendments also which are which might not be that relevant from an exam standpoint so i particularly focused on the key amendments which has been brought by finance act 2022 and yes you can go on to your book and make the amendments using a pen or pencil over there itself okay you need not uh, you know get take a print out of this uh, page but you but you just go on that particular page where in your book this amendment this uh, section is there and you just amend it over here and that will suffice because they are not much okay so yes that's all for the amendment guys uh, july 23 attempt is round the corner you need to pull up your socks socks quick time check you know few months to go for your attempt so all the best for your examination guys please prepare well because um, now time is very less and yes amendments are one thing which uh, every examiner or every um, uh, you know question paper setter would be lured to give in the examination so do these amendments very very well for the july 23 and december 23 attempt and yes the test series is on for all of you if you want to join the test series for intermediate as well as final students you can whatsapp on 9643929913 and ask yourself um uh, to get yourself added to the whatsapp group test series is going on till july 23 attempt and even for december students it will start two months before de december so um the test series will be there for all the students free of cost for all the cms students it's not it is not necessary that you must have purchased the classes from us only then you are eligible for test series you can take test series even if you have not uh, purchased classes from us test series is going on for three subjects in intermediate dt idt and audit test series is going on for two subjects in final cost audit and bvm spm and that is the um uh, test series Sh schedule for test series is mostly on saturdays and sundays saturdays and sundays are um the test series schedule and schedule you will also find in the whatsapp group so please join the whatsapp group for free test series for the cma uh, students and yes the tests are prepared exclusively according to the study mat of the institute of cost accountants of india and the study mat pattern and the pattern of mtps which has been released by the institute the tests are prepared exactly on that format So yes that's all for this particular session we'll be meeting with relevant information in the future sessions as well till that time all the very best and happy studying bye bye see you in the next lecture